everyone. Hey, this is Sheeta and Nikki, and welcome to another episode of Real Conversations. Did you guys know that May is Mental Health Awareness Month? So we wanted to come to you guys and talk about some early detection signs and ways that can help manage your mental health. Yes, and also locally local events in your area and ways that you can get involved in mental health awareness. So let's get into it. Boop. Lunch breaks, outtakes, we know how to vibe Interviews, interviews, latest news Read your comments too, what are you thinking? Ooh, have lunch with us too, conversations with you Real conversations with Sheeta and Nikki Conversations with Sheeta and Nikki. Yeah. Real, real, real conversations with Sheeta. So today's episode is about mental health awareness, y'all. So, so how did mental health awareness start? It started in 1949 by Mental Health Aware Mental Health America organization. This is a time to raise awareness of those living with mental and behavioral health issues and to help reduce the stigma so many people experience so you know 1949 that's really i feel like that's not that long ago yeah um for them to start you know having a month dedicated to mental health awareness mm -hmm. um so i think that's a good thing that you know now there's a month dedicated to it which you know it should be talked about every month, mm -hmm. but just to kind of eliminate that stigma about mental health awareness. I think that, you know, us doing this episode, you know, is a way to really reduce that stigma and let people know that it's okay to share your journey and talk about, mm -hmm. you know, those things that may have been down times or bad times for you, mm -hmm. but you were able to get through it, yeah. you know? So having this month and just, dedicating this episode you know it's a good way to really spread the word and spread the awareness yeah i totally agree because i think at some point in life we've all dealt with some sort of mental health yeah. um whether it's depression grief no matter what it is and we can get into that a little bit more as we get into the episode yeah so what exactly is mental health so i grabbed this off of mentalhealth.gov Mental health, it can be emotional, psychological, and also social well-being. And a lot of times, I don't think people think about mental health in the social aspect. Like, sometimes yeah. it's difficult for people to be around other people in a social setting. Yeah. You know? That's true. Yeah. So, mental health, it affects how we think, feel, and also act around others. Mm -hmm. um, it determines how you handle your stress. Um, and also mental health can start as early as childhood. Mm. And I know a lot of times people, they don't like a lot of times in childhood, they may not acknowledge it because they may not know what signs they just think the kid may just yeah. be like, oh, they just bad or go sit down somewhere. And, yeah. you know, it might be something a little bit more that needs to be looked at. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Because one of our statistics we um, noted here is that boys are more than twice as likely as girls to be diagnosed with ADHD. Mm -hmm. So about 12.9% compared to 5.6% according to the CDC. Yeah. So it doesn't give an age range. It just says boys. So I'm assuming like adolescent mm -hmm. ages, you yeah. know, but it does. It starts at childhood yeah you know exactly and it could be a lot of things that contribute to that as well it might have been abuse in the home someone yeah. might have been sexually molested as a child and you know a lot of times that's when you know children will spur off and start developing these behavior patterns so, yeah yeah you know. so childhood trauma is real yes um, so, yeah, it can be the environment you live in, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, just and even not having means to certain resources, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that contributes to trauma as well. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of factors that do play mm -hmm. into, you know, mental health and, you know, that childhood trauma and just things, 
you know, children being exposed to things at such a young age. Yeah. It can be a range of different things. Yeah, you know? exactly. So what are some of the early signs of mental health? Mm -hmm. And this is something that I also grabbed off of mentalhealth.gov. Eating, sleeping too much. You know, sometimes if you don't get enough sleep. Yeah. Or you're getting too much sleep sometimes. You you know, you may think like, oh, they sleeping all day. It could be a reason for that. Yeah. Maybe they don't want to get out, face the world, face the problems or issues that someone is having. Yeah. Um, a loss of appetite, you know, and maybe not even just looking at someone else, looking at yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? These are things that you could be experiencing, pulling away from people. Yeah. Um, not doing your normal activities. Um, if you're a social type of a person, if you no longer want to go out with your friends, socialize, yeah. things like that, having little or to no energy. I know personally that's something I've dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after losing my mother, I just felt like I didn't have the energy to get up and really do too much of anything. You yeah. know, a lot of times people trying to pull me out the house, I would just go, but I really didn't have like the desire or energy to honestly do it all the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. What's some things that you got? Yeah. Yeah. So I know loss of like motivation. That's mm -hmm. real. That's a sign of, you know, mental health. Yeah. Um, and then feeling unusually confused, forgetful, on edge, angry, yeah. upset, worried, or scared. Yeah. You know, it some of the stuff it might depend on like what's causing the person to feel this way. Mm -hmm. You know, so um experiencing severe mood swings that cause problems in relationships, mm -hmm. um, having persistent thoughts and memories you can't get out of your head. Mm -hmm. Thinking of harming yourself or others. Yes. That's a big one. Um, yeah, because that is a sign of, you know, mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and just, um, you know, suicidal ideation, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely a sign of, you know, mental health that, you know, you should get help or, mm -hmm. you know, go to your local um, physician to get help. Yeah. Um, Hearing voices or believing things are, that are not true. Yes. Um, that's another sign of mental health. Mm -hmm. um, but those are things that I feel like, you know, those are signs. And signs are always a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's your body telling you that mm -hmm. something uh, needs to be addressed. Yeah. You know, so having signs and knowing those signs are mm -hmm. always good. And just, you know, recognizing those in yourself mm -hmm. and then other people that are around you. Yeah. Um, and just knowing when to get help. And then another sign is inability to perform daily tasks, like taking care of your yes. kids or getting to school or work. Mm -hmm. That's definitely another big one because once, Things start to interfere in like your daily routine, your daily life mm -hmm. where you're not able to things that you were able to do before. It's just so overwhelming that you're not able to do it. Mm -hmm. Those are definitely signs that, you know, there's definitely something going on. Yeah. And um, that could even mean yourself, too. You don't want to get up, shower, yeah. brush your teeth, yeah. wash your face. Daily activities, you know, yeah. that you're just not able to do, like hygiene, mm -hmm. you're combing your hair, yes. going to work, mm -hmm. taking care of the kids, cleaning yeah. the house. Mm -hmm. um, when your daily routine starts to get interrupted like that, yeah. that's definitely a sign. Yeah. So it's good to just know what some of those signs are, you know. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So um, some of the statistics that you talked about earlier, we mm -hmm. got a couple more here. Um, I think this is one, a big one too. Members of the LGBTQ plus community are almost three times more likely to experience a mental health condition, mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, and also, um, I'm just going to say that's not on here, but also those suicidal thoughts because they're not getting accepted by their family, their friends, maybe their peers yeah. um, for being a member of that community. 
Um, also, it says half of all mental illnesses show early signs before a person turns 14 years old. And three fourths of mental health illness begin um, before the age of 24. Mm -hmm. So that's a big one, too, because a lot of children, they suffer from bullying from school. Yeah. You know, kind of like how you were talking about earlier, just not having certain things. Some children, they don't have the latest pair of shoes or mm -hmm. the latest phone and they're getting bullied because of their clothes and things like that. So, yeah. you know, we've seen in the news the last couple of years how what children are like nine years old killing themselves yeah. and hanging themselves yeah. because they were being bullied and teased in school. And mm -hmm. that is just terrible. Like when I was younger you didn't hear of anything like that yeah 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 and then as i got older um i will say that i'm in my 20s that's when i think it kind of started coming out that teenagers were like cutting their cells mm. that's not anything that i had ever heard of like as a teenager of a, someone like cutting their cells yeah so it's just like it seems like the more um, that we explore and talk about mental health, there's different early signs and detections that you can look for. Because yeah. I know 20 years ago, this wasn't things that we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And then just parents, because we're talking about kids. So like even parents being aware of like signs and symptoms for their children, because mm -hmm. children, you know, they get anxiety, they get stressed mm -hmm. out, you know, too, just like adults do. Yeah. So it's important not to dismiss those feelings or, mm -hmm. you know, intuitions that you have about your children. Yeah. And, you know, don't be afraid to explore it with them and ask them questions, you know, because yeah. if they are having any type of suicidal ideations, you bringing it up or you asking that question isn't going to make them mm -hmm. uh, commit suicide. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's just bringing awareness to it and let them know that you're there for them and they can talk to you, mm -hmm. you know. So if you ever have that feeling that they may be experiencing that, you know, you asking those questions mm -hmm. um, is only going to help them. You right. know, it, it's not going to make it worse. It's mm -hmm. just going to help them let them know that you're there for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Never be afraid to, you know, ask questions. If you ever see or feel like, you mm -hmm. know, something isn't right. You yeah. know, he normally plays outside mm -hmm. and now he isn't. Yeah. You know, he usually likes so-and-so to come over. Mm -hmm. You know, like things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, just ask. Right, you know, right. I so that they feel me. comfortable with sharing that with mm -hmm. you. I know we had a um a guest on the show, mm -hmm. um, Janelle Newman, mm -hmm. and she had talked about even, you know, when she was feeling depressed, mm -hmm. um, and why, you know, um she wasn't she was feeling like she wasn't able to find you know, be in a serious relationship, but she was seeing other people mm -hmm. in, you know, situ you know, relationships or whatever. And yeah. she just thought that all oh, they're in a relationship. So they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're happy. Yeah. And she was able to go to her mom and talk to her mom, you know, about it. And her yeah. mother was able to really get her give her clarity or clarification mm -hmm. on, you know, what could be going on and you know, what's what you see on the outside might not right be they might not be happy, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's good to have a parent to talk to or just mm -hmm. anyone, you know, that you know that you can trust right. um, and talk to, you know, and get clarification like she did. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. And mental health, it doesn't just affect one certain person of a certain age, mm -hmm. race. It can affect anyone. Yeah. No matter where you're from, rich or poor, you know, African American, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter. It can affect anyone. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then a lot too, um, as we're talking about mental health, like I've seen and just kind of heard just off of social media with being in this pandemic, a lot of people's mental health have mm -hmm. been affected. Yeah. Um, just speaking of different people that I know, um, yeah. they don't like to go out to eat anymore. They mm. rather order their food inside. Um, 
something else. I think we might have talked about it on the show prior, or maybe it was something me and you talked about. Mm-hmm. But the children, um, some children are feeling unsafe if they don't have their mask on. Oh yeah. Because you know this is what they're we've been in it for two plus years now, so mm-hmm. we're still wearing the mask, and they're feeling as though like you know no I can't go outside without this mask on right. you know. They don't know how it is per se, or even remember pre COVID. Right, because they're know? so little. That's all they remember. Exactly. Um, I know someone that I know was talking about um a patient of theirs. Um, they're wearing their mask all day, mm-hmm. twenty four hours a day, what? and it's creating damage on their ear like mm. it's their ear is like severely like you know with mm. it being pulled right. like that so mm. i don't know what's going on with that but you know they don't feel safe yeah and it's just like wow like you know personally speaking you know I was one to travel all the time. Like if my friend had not got married last year, mm. I I don't know if I would have even been going anywhere that I've been going now because I didn't want to fly. Right. But it was like one of my best friends. So I'm like, I got to go to her wedding, yeah. you know, so that kind of helped me get back into the routine. Mm-hmm. But I'm still not going out of the country. Like yeah. personally myself, I don't feel safe going out the country. So yeah. yeah, I think the pandemic it has created, you know, some heightened anxiety. Mm-hmm. You know, because now when you were just able to go to the grocery store, now it's like I have to think twice. Exactly. You have to think twice about going. Like, mm-hmm. do I go out and expose myself to this mm-hmm. and then come home and bring it home to my kids like right. but i need to go to the grocery store right you know what i'm saying so yeah. it definitely caused anxiety not just mm-hmm. for adults but for kids too yeah because they're used to going to school mm-hmm. and they weren't able to so yeah yeah all of those things um and another statistic um that we have here is that suicide is the fourth leading cause of death in 15 to 19 year olds according mm. to who um do something.org mm. um so you know like you were saying about the bullying mm-hmm. and now there's like cyber bullying oh, and, yeah. you know so 15 to 19 i mean the fourth leading cause of suicide like that's terrible. that's so young uh, you know, like kids that age shouldn't even be thinking about wanting to end their life yeah. at that young age. You yeah. know, they should be having fun, enjoying, mm-hmm. you know, hanging out with their friends. Yeah. So, you know, 15. Well, you know, what t- what age do kids start working? 16? 16. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like new job, you yeah. know, working, you get your first new job. Like mm-hmm. those are things that, you know, kids should be thinking about or you know getting Mm -hmm. ready to go to college right right. you know those are the things that you know kids that age Mm -hmm. should be thinking about not suicide you know so it's sad to see that that that's the fourth leading cause yeah you know that's terrible that's terrible Yeah. yeah so another statistic is um half of all mental illnesses show early signs before a person turns 14 years old yeah it's yeah that's why i think it's definitely so key to make sure you're looking after your children or your loved ones to make sure that they are in a good mental head space Mm -hmm. and you know if you do see something like how you said talk to them or talk with someone that you trust and see you know what you think and the best way that you could possibly help them yeah 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 i would just say don't ever be afraid to just ask questions Mm -hmm. you know if you see something strange something doesn't seem right Mm -hmm. you know just you know pose a question yeah definitely so so yeah so we have now some different ways um that you can help to cope with your mental health yeah um the first one would definitely be to seek help from a trained professional yes um and I know that's what I did when I was dealing with my anxiety. Mm-hmm. I went to go see somebody, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so um, 
I felt like it helped me. It really did help me a lot. Um, and that's the big thing, too, that I have here on my notes is mm -hmm. if you're going to see someone and you don't feel like you're maybe clicking with this person or you're not getting what you need from them, you can definitely change your professional that you were seeing. You don't mm -hmm. have to just stick with that first person. If you have to see a second or a third, you know, you have to sometimes feel things out and it may take you a couple times to get to that one professional that you feel like this is the right person for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So not not settling yeah. on just one right. therapist. Like you should find someone that really fits your personality yeah. and you, you know, feel like you can trust that person yeah. and get the help you need. Exactly. So don't just settle, you know, is that yeah. what you can say? Yeah, because yeah. um, say for example, if I refer the person that I talk to some to someone, maybe that person isn't a good fit for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, don't feel like necessarily you have to feel obligated. Well, they help Nicole. Yeah. So I gotta stick with them. You know, give it time, give it a try. If you feel like you're not getting any help or resolve, yeah. Then seek someone else. Yeah. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then if you do have a preference, if you want a male or a female, mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. It's your preference, is what you best feel comfortable with. Yeah. And now, you know, things are a lot more um accessible mm -hmm. so now you know if you want telehealth mm -hmm. therapy or if you want face to face yeah you know now there's options so you can find a therapist you in mm -hmm. illinois you can find somebody that meets your criteria mm -hmm. in california yeah you know what i'm saying if you're doing telehealth you know yeah. therapy so yeah. there's a lot more options i feel like mm -hmm. as far as seeking help than there was before you yeah know. definitely and then support groups are always good as well yes having yes. a support group mm -hmm. um you know someone else that you can relate to that's going through the same things you're going through exactly you know because whatever questions that you have mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure there's a group out there or people out there that have asked or are asking those same yeah, questions. Definitely. So, you know, like your mom used to tell you when you was little, no, or the teachers used to tell you when you was little, <laughs> like there's no stupid question. Right. Like, there's no such thing. Because whatever you're asking, I'm sure it's other people there mm -hmm. that may be afraid to ask. Yeah. But you standing up for yourself and asking those questions, you not only helped yourself, but you're helping somebody mm -hmm. else that you didn't even know needed the help. Yes. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And then also, too, like if you feel like a lot of times people may say, well, I can't afford that or mm -hmm. I, I don't have the money for that. You know, there's a lot of resources and options out here. You yeah. know, you may just have to put your boots to the ground and find out, call and do some research. Yeah. But, you know, if you feel like this is something that you really need, then you need to do it mm -hmm. you know you need to do it you know and a lot of times the insurances they do provide that if you are on some type of state um Assistant. insurance mm -hmm. yeah you know that's a benefit in there so in in some insurances i know it's here in illinois county care they do have a behavioral health um um area that you can call and get counseling so yeah yeah okay what was another one? So exercise. <laughs> so I know <laughs> me and Rashida have talked about this. So and I did sign up for the gym too. Rashida. No, that's good. Yeah, I, did. I haven't went yet, but you know I did. Well, that's gonna be another couple yeah. months. But. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but exercise can really help with your mental health yeah yeah they have talked about when you exercise you feel better those endorphins yeah you know they can help you you know mm -hmm. you feel better and good about yourself and that doesn't necessarily mean a gym membership that could mean going to go take a walk yeah um in nature mm -hmm. walk around the block you know to the grocery store where you may normally drive you yeah, know yeah. just some form of getting out and you know just getting your feet on the ground so. yeah little things yeah. If you can work out at home or mm -hmm. you know maybe even if you're going to the grocery store or store maybe don't mm -hmm. park at the closer 
parking spot, maybe yeah. park a little bit further. Yeah. And then walk and get those, you know, extra steps in. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that or going to the park. Yeah. You know, to walk. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And maybe even recruit other people to walk with you. Like, yeah. girl, come on, let's go. Yeah. You know, or whatever. Yeah. You know, so you're doing, you know, mm -hmm. just a little bit. Only, yeah. you know, a little bit helps. Yeah, we used to do that, remember? We did when it was warm outside and it got cold. Yeah, we used to. <laughs> well, we stopped. Yeah, we stopped. Yeah. I can't do the cold, y'all. Yeah. Uh -uh. Oh, Lord. But yeah. Yeah. It's not easy, but you can do it. Yeah. You yeah. know, you just have to have the motivation to do it. Yeah. And as long as you start, I feel like. Nobody's saying you got to work, walk 30 minutes or an hour, maybe five, 10 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you start off there and then you build yourself up. So. Yeah. Yeah. Just in one day. Yep. That's like Alicia it. said on our last episode, one day. Yep. It only takes one, one day. day. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So one day at a time. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay, next we have a healthier diet. Mm -hmm. um, that includes limiting or either cutting off your alcohol and getting more nutritious foods. Mm -hmm. um, that can definitely help. A lot of times, you know, people resort to alcohol and thinking that's going to help them with their problems when it actually it suppresses. It suppresses and it can also create more problems because while you're out there drinking you know what i'm saying like you may get into a fight because you already angry at the bar or something get into an accident so yeah you know that's drugs and alcohol that's not going to help your mental yeah. health no at that all that just adds to it yeah <laughs> exactly yeah and then a healthier diet like you know course like i have my fast food which but i'm doing better though i'm i'm doing better though but i do have to say since i have cut out a lot of the fast food mm -hmm. i do feel better mm -hmm. you know so yeah and then the next one that i have on here is meditation mm -hmm. now that's subjective some people they don't believe in that but i know personally myself when i do my meditation i feel better Mm -hmm. um you know that it could include like being in a quiet space mm -hmm. um and just being calm and just having quiet and just getting your thoughts together or you know you can go on youtube or different um apps they have calm and things like that yeah. where you can have a guided meditation yeah um there's a lot out there so. yeah yeah i think meditation is good because mm -hmm. when you are busy and doing a lot of things mm -hmm. it is good to kind of take maybe 10 minutes and kind of cut all of that out mm -hmm. all the noise out mm -hmm. all the tv out just yeah. everything around you kind of just cut it out and kind of just center yourself and just you know give just have peace mm -hmm. quiet you know yeah and kind of recenter yourself yeah. so you know meditation i think is a great you know mm -hmm. tool to kind of to help with um, mental health or if you're having like anxiety or depression, mm -hmm. you know, just give yourself like 10 minutes yeah, to kind of just turn off the TV mm -hmm. or even if you're like on your ride home from work or somewhere, somewhere mm -hmm. and you're in the car by yourself, right. turn the radio off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Put the phone down and kind of yeah. just, you know, take time to yourself and yeah. just collect your collect your thoughts and just recenter yourself yeah definitely and i think that's a good thing too putting that phone down mm -hmm. we be on this phone all the time i mean it's like we sit all like where's my phone at yeah i had to look at my phone mm -hmm. like too much i had said when i'm watching my shows i'm not gonna just have this phone right here you know if yeah. i you know you gotta like you said tune this out for a minute yeah you know that's what i like to do i like to watch my tv shows that puts me in a comfort zone you know and i take the phone <laughs> <You're so silly. laughs> that phone goes on site i mean sometimes i have it on but you yeah. know typically i want to quiet it i don't want to be like who's calling let me get up and see yeah. who's calling who's mm -hmm. texting me i'm gonna get to it later 
Yeah. Well, right now I need this for me, you yeah. know? Yeah, I do that too. Because sometimes being on the phone, it's overload. Mm -hmm. Like it's a senses overload. It's too much. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll put my phone on the charger and my phone will be somewhere in my room and then I'll be in the living room. Like, so yeah. I'm not even paying attention to anything. If someone's calling, nothing. I'm yeah, somewhere totally know, different. Yeah. So that's what I do sometimes. Cause I'm just like, oh, this is too much. I can't like, oh my God, it's yeah. always something going on. Yeah. And you just have to tune that out and focus on other, you know, mm -hmm. other things that you can be doing that's positive, you right. know? Yeah. I know. Cause she didn't do that to me several times. What? Now. Oh, it's tw a whole 24 hours oh. later. Hey, what's going on? Girl, what's yeah, you not going to 24 home. hours? I don't be <laughs> that I'm going to be away somewhere. Especially if it's on the charger. I put on yeah. the charger. I do that intentionally. Because mm -hmm. my charger is somewhere separate than, like, yeah, you know, the yeah. living room or the kitchen. You know, mm -hmm. it'd be somewhere else. So I, I'd just be like, yeah, you know, I'll call you. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess I, I let her slide then. Yeah, I'll call you back though. <laughs> I do be going. Hours. Girl, you can still tell me. <laughs> but <Sure>. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the last thing that I have on here is practicing gratitude. So for those that don't know what gratitude is, that is like, you know, a lot of times we complain about what we don't get, what we ain't doing. Mm hmm gratitude is being thankful for what you do have yeah what you do get so sometimes we need to sit and think about gratitude mm -hmm. write it out journal it out think it out but just be like you know what i got a lot more to be thankful for yeah than to not be thankful for mm -hmm. i was blessed to be able to wake up to see another day have breath in my body because somebody else didn't yeah that's true so, yeah, thankful for your family, your friends, no matter what, that job, you may not like it, but you yeah. know it's putting food on the table for you and your family. Mm -hmm. So, just to sit back and think about the things that you do have. Yeah, so. yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, just being grateful, showing yeah. gratitude, and being nice to other people. Yes, yeah. So, that's a big one. That'll definitely build character, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So exactly yeah, yes yes um so another topic that uh, we wanted to talk about today was ways to spread awareness about health uh, mental health mm -hmm. so we jotted down a few notes y'all you know to help you know spread awareness so one of the, it one of the ways is just to talk to everyone you know so, like we're doing now on the mm -hmm. episode, we're dedicating this episode to mental health awareness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have a podcast or if you have a platform that you can just share, you know, knowledge with, yeah. you know, that's a way, you know, to spread awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, um, open up about your experience. So, yes. like we kind of said before, you know, someone, connect with someone that you trust or yeah. talk to someone that you trust. Um, or like you said, Nicole, a health professional, mm -hmm. you know, um, to open up and talk about your experiences with. Yeah. Don't keep it bottled in. Yeah. You know, just, you know, talk about it with someone. Yeah. You know, like you said before, now they have, um, you know, telehealth, um, therapy, you know, different ways that you mm -hmm. can open up and talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, encourage kind language so like you were saying practice gratitude mm -hmm. you know being saying positive things to yourself yeah affirmations yes um, that's a good one for yeah right there. so affirmations um mm -hmm. you know just encouraging kind words saying yes. positive words you know yeah and encourage people around you to do the same yeah um educate yourself about mental illness you know, yes. so no figure know what the signs are. Yeah. Um, ask questions, like we said. Mm -hmm. Um, coordinate a mental health screening event. So mm -hmm. that's a big one. Yeah. Um, we haven't done that. We should probably do that one one day. Yeah, we can. Do yeah. uh do an event, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's some that's something that you can do like on a bigger scale, mm -hmm. you know, get your community involved and maybe have a health screening or yeah. do a walk or mm -hmm. something like that, 
where yeah. you can spread awareness in your community. Yeah. Um, and then volunteer. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. leverage social media. So use your social media platform. Every Nowadays, everybody got an Instagram mm-hmm. or a TikTok or whatever. So yeah. even if on your social media, share maybe a statistics or something that you think people may not know. Yeah. And maybe create a discussion about it on your page. Yeah. Like you don't have to be a celebrity or have a thousand, a hundred thousand followers to mm-hmm. spread awareness. You yeah. know, just... You know, one person, you know, you can change their life. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be a million people, exactly. you know. So, yeah. so those were just a few ways to just raise awareness in your community, mm-hmm. you know, during Mental Health Awareness Month and just every month, you right. know. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So just as I was saying earlier, um, mental health can affect everyone, mm-hmm. okay? And that includes celebrities as well. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. (laughs) And some people, they think, oh, they have so much money or they have all these great women around them. Right, they can imagine having the issues. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. But, you know, that doesn't mean a doggone thing, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, we're all human. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, a couple celebrities that have mental health. Chrissy Teigen, um, for those that don't know, that's John Legend's wife. Yeah, she shared her story of having postpartum depression. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, to think that someone is depressed like her, she's a well-known model. Yeah. People think beautiful, mm-hmm. you know, and she struggles with, you know, the postpartum depression. Yeah. Um, Demi Lovato um she's been very open about her struggles um yeah she's a singer right? yeah, mm-hmm. yeah her bipolar disorder mm-hmm. um and then um michael phelps who's a medalist from the olympics um yeah. he has adhd donny osmond mm-hmm. um that's a big one to me i don't know if yeah. you all know who donny osmond yeah. is but donny and marie they yeah. was he was a childhood, yeah, uh, a child celebrity. Yeah, you know, he's been in the limelight right. all his life. Exactly, and so then I can see why he has, has, you know, social anxiety. Yeah, but you would think like, okay, you get on that stage, you know, this is what they've been doing, but yeah. you know, um, even Summer Walker, I don't know if you all know who that is, mm-hmm. but you know, she deals with like stage fright as well. Yeah. Yeah, and then one that you put on the list here, Rashida, is Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody should know who that is. Yeah, a comedian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he's from Chicago, mm-hmm. so he has um bipolar um depression, and he committed suicide. Yeah, in two thousand and fourteen. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think anyone knew that he was struggling with depression. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I have read that he had. He was trying to get help a few times oh, in really? regards to his depression, oh, um, wow. you know, leading up to his death mm-hmm. in 2014. Okay. Um, so he had suffered with it, you know, for years, um, mm-hmm. you know, all throughout his adulthood. And, you know, that's the one that you wouldn't think mm-hmm. suffers from, yeah. you know, depression or, you know, bipolar because mm-hmm. he's the one that everyone looks at yeah. to make them laugh. Exactly. He has all the jokes. So, yeah. you know, of course he's funny. You're mm-hmm. funny. You're happy. Mm-hmm. Well, no, not exactly. Right. Right. Um, so, yeah, he was in so many movies. Mm-hmm. Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, Mork yeah. and Mindy. Listen, that was from my childhood, okay? Yeah, Mork and Mindy. <laughs> Y'all know about Mork and Mindy. Nanu, I, Nanu. I know um, Jumanji. <laughs> that was a good movie. They yeah. made that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just never know what other people are going through. So yeah. like Nicole said, practice gratitude. Yeah. You know, be kind to other people because you don't know, you know, what they may be going through, Mm -hmm. you know, so. Exactly. So, yeah. So, Robin Williams, for sure, rest in peace. Yes. Robin Williams, okay. But he definitely, he has a legacy that will live on forever. Yes. Like, I think before I left the house today, Mm -hmm. Soraya was watching Mrs. Doubtfire on TV. Mm. So, 
Yeah, he's definitely paved the way for a lot of other actors and yeah. comedians. Um, yes, so, yes. yeah. Yes. Shout out to Rob Williams and his family. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you have down some local events here in our Chicago land area. Yeah, so I wanted to share with you all just a few of um, events, mental health events that are going that will be going on in the month of May um, to bring awareness to mental health awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of them is the eighth annual mental health conference that will be on Wednesday, May 18th and May 19th at Prairie State College in Chicago Heights. Um, So if you're interested in going to that conference, you can look them up online at Mm -hmm. prairiestate.edu. Another one is the 5K Run for Mental Health and Wellness, which is on Saturday, May 21st through the 22nd. Mm -hmm. And that's in New Lenox, Illinois. Um, And if you want to sign up for the 5K Run, you can go to runsignup.com. Um, and then um, the third one is Ask for Help, um, Ask for Help Foundation, which is a mental health awareness, which will be on Friday, the 20th through the 21st. And that will be downtown in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to sign up for that or get more information, you can go to ask-for-help.com. Mm-hmm. And then the last one is in my own community, mm-hmm. which is um, at the park forest library they have mindfulness kits Mm -hmm. for mental health so um it says here that they're offering um mindfulness kits to encourage people to learn about mindfulness and the importance of mental health Mm -hmm. so the kit it looks like it'll include a variety of books and items that promote mindful activities and educate individuals about mental health so if you are interested in that and if you're in the Park Forest area, um, you can register for the event and go to park pfpl.org to register. Right. Um, and then also I just wanted to share because we did talk about suicide and suicide ideation. So I just want to share with you all the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, uh, which is 1-800-273-8255. Okay, so don't be afraid to get help, you know, ask for help, you know, we're all in this together, Mm -hmm. you know, so don't ever feel like you're afraid um, or to share your experience with someone. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. So we just want to thank you all for listening and hanging with us um, as we talk about mental health awareness. Um, Like we said earlier, you know, um, join a local event in your community or even just start a conversation on your social media page, mm-hmm. you know, just to spread awareness, doing your part, you know, to let other people know that they're not alone. Yeah. Um, so we want to close out today's episode with a takeaway from the comedian Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, it says everyone you meet is fighting a battle. You know nothing about. Be kind always. Mm. Robin Williams. I love that. Yes. I love that. Yes. Okay. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Before we close out, we want to thank you all for listening. We want to invite you to YouTube to sign up for our YouTube family. Yes, join the YouTube family. (laughs) You won't be disappointed. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, because you get to see this episode two days earlier, okay? Yes. Yes. So our YouTube is Real Conversations with Sheeta and Nikki podcast. Mm -hmm. Make sure to check out our TikTok, Sheeta and Nikki. Yes. And also um, our Facebook page, we do have that Real Conversations with Sheeta and Nikki. Mm -hmm. And also our IG. And make sure that you subscribe to our Instagram, which is Real Conversations 21. Yes. And thanks for watching. See you next time.